All right, so I'm going to launch into this. And I, I, I'm going to show more urban scale drawings today, but I'm starting with a kind of a, a little glimpse of my context that this is maybe coming out of yesterday. Um, I'm a visual thinker, and I consider myself an artist and a painter. <clears throat> and I appreciate very much the teaching of Kelly Wilson, who was my painter and painting instructor at um, the GSD. So um, what I'm starting to think about as, as we're talking here is that we can um, call the service of the computer um, to work for us. And I guess what you end up with depends on maybe your core, the, the sort of values that you looked for the computer to bring to you. And maybe we can come back to that idea. Um, but to me, landscapes and place and sites, even in my painting and into um, pretty much all the work I do is very important. So these are just some of my paintings. Um, and I want to distinguish, I'm starting to come up with a way of understanding drawing and sketching as that which is, which we've talked a lot about, the mark making and um, the kind of processual exploration where you are, uh, where it's very fluid and there's ambiguity um, and the, the kind of problem solving that's involved in that um, and the kind of deliberate, deliberate provocation. This is a super old drawing, so the, don't judge the building as a student project. Um, but the, the drawing as a process I think is very important um, and the projective aspect of drawing is what I'm always interested in. This is not my sketch, um, but it was a good illustration of the role of trace, which I will come back to the idea of the ability to layer that trace gives us. And um, as we all know, we can work, when you use trace, you're looking at simultaneous spaces at once. And you can work so conceptually, you're working um, on the space between floors, right, or on one floor in relation to the other, just as you're working on um, an old version or a new version, right? So you have this ability to work on two versions or, or multiple iterations of a site at once through trace. And that's what, um, it's something like that that feeds into the later work that I do. It's the simultaneity that the layering gives you that I think is very important and that allows you to inhabit the spaces that you draw. And inhabiting is, is important since sight and context are important. You're always putting yourself in your project. And so the plan and the section are literally spaces, they're, they're cuts with space beyond at all the time. So um, I think a lot of us look at these things as space. And this is a drawing by Adolf Loos, and it's a sketch of one of my favorite buildings, um, which is at the Muller House in Prague. Is that what you said? You called it? Oh. Um, yeah, so here's what he says about it, that he's, he's not conceiving architecture um, as plans or facades or sections, but they're just these interconnected spaces. So Los was clearly a spatial thinker, um, and I think a lot of us can relate to him. And this is the house, many of you probably know it, it's in the 1930s or so in Prague. And Los was known for this approach to just have this very pared down outside, right, that serves as the mask to the building um, with these highly spatially complex interiors um, that then get this um, material treatment. So they're just so rich and lush. And um, just to give you a sense of the complexity of the inside of this building, it's conceived as a roughly uh, pinwheeling plan where these spaces are all slightly stepping up in relation to each other as you move between them. And then there are smaller spaces within 
those spaces that are also at different levels. So you can imagine trying to conceptualize this kind of project. It, it speaks to his genius in a way, but it also encapsulates, I think, the um, potential and the sort of spatiality of the plan and section that, that I think architects appreciate. These, this, you're looking at a plan here of a piece, this is just a little section of the building, um, with these scaled spaces and the floor pattern, and that's the section elevation of the same moment. And you can see how similar they are in a way that the plan and the section are becoming the same thing. And that is, to me, this the result of this person that has thought about it in, in that way. And the result are these very dynamic conditions of spaces within spaces and these oblique connections. The stairs are becoming the furniture. Everything is um, kind of cross-referencing and the rooms are really interlocked in this way. It's incredibly beautiful. And you can see again a little snapshot of a piece of the plan with a um, section at the top and you have that oblique from that little moment that's nested in the room that's nested above a larger space and then the same thing happening in the plan. So this, there's a simultaneity that's going on here where he's designing a plan and he's thinking in section. And it's those two together that to me captures the kind of essence of how we use drawing. And it's a very unscientific way of describing it, but um, this is one of his sketches which is literally a superimposed section on the plan. So this is like the pièce de résistance, but here's the section of that moment. Here's another section study of that moment. And that's, that's very much how we work. Um, and I, I believe in this kind of layered um, way of working because it lets you <coughs> produce and work on very, very complex spatial um, arrangements through drawing. Um, so now I'm going to shift for a minute and sort of back up, back up and talk about mapping, which I think is another way that in our, we might consider it drawing too. It, it's, it's drawing to me. Um, and James Corner has a very nice piece on the agency of mapping. And I'm bringing it up because uh, there's, a, there's a kind of a line between representation of a project and um, a way that we look in drawing as rep representation, and then a way that we look for drawing to uh, have agency, and for the project that you create to have agency in the world, to have an impact in the world. So agency um, is very important. I think it's what underlies why we do the work we do and what, what we look for our buildings to do. So he talks about drawing um, or mapping here as a very open-ended um, projective practice. And he describes here um, how it's not through a finding but a founding. And it's, it's not that you're trying to copy or lay something down, but you're trying to uncover a reality. And that's the way I think of how we work on sites and how we draw ideas out of sites. Um, it unfolds potential and it sets conditions for new worlds to exist. So this is, this is very much how I consider my drawings that are across the way in the gallery that I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and he says, mapping is never neutral either. It's not passive, um, it's in fact a very uh, it's formative. It's a formative part of the creative process where you're disclosing and then you're staging the conditions for the emergence of new realities. So it's that moment where, and there's, a, I, there's ideation involved in that, and of course drawing is a part of that, um, but it's an agent of design. And there are some terms that he goes through where he describes you know, the map drawing, it's a combination of diagramming, but it's always locked down in space. 
and sometimes it involves notation and time. And this is a student project from last semester um, that starts to maybe capture a little bit of uh, the way a mapping might work where it's a picture of St. Louis and many things are being told about St. Louis and the development activity and it's a breakdown of the relationships of all of the political actors in St. Louis and the agencies they belong to that vote on the different development projects. Um, she called it power in St. Louis. Um, so there are multiple pieces to it, uh, but it's spatializing development and then putting it in this other context that you wouldn't normally see. So it draws out the political context, which shapes this place very much. Um, so he talks about the, these components, there, there's the surface on which you work, the elements that you're trying to highlight or discover, pull out, and then how you make the connections between those elements. And we're not gonna, I'm not gonna get into all this, but um, layering and maybe what he calls game board, which is the way that you combine experience and different competing interests is a way that, um, I think that resonates with the way that I work through the indeterminacy of layering and the simultaneity um, together with the kind of competing interests. Because that, I work on cities and that is, um, those are conditions that exist on almost all sites. So these are some other older works. Um, this is a, very old project, but hand-drawn mixture of uh, media. And uh, it was trying to unseat the idea of the fixed image of a postcard. And the project was this tourist center here, and it was about movement through this building, and it was about movement through the city, and the way that all of these other monuments um, would get, are actually perceived. In con contrary to the postcard. But I put it up here because it speaks to, um, I guess, my, um, my search always for the representation of a project, in this case, which is also a product of um, the ideas of the project, to avoid this kind of static, fixed, single reading. Because that speaks to the nature of a city, which is never a single thing, right? It's so many things to so many people, and there's so much going on. Um, so this is four different boards, and each board has multiple sheets. So the drawings read across scales in relation to each other. Um, they lock into different contexts. So that's the building back in this courtyard, and then it locks into its larger site, et cetera. Another um, drawing on postcards that stems out of that same place, this is a city in the Czech Republic, um, is mapping the, the malleability of the identity of this place. So again, it's, and these are more um, analytical, this is more analytical kind of drawing, and, um, and these are, this one is done in the computer, um, but it's drawing on it's layering, so these, all of these postcards, which are from the different eras in the country, are all of the same place, and they're all superimposed here. And you can see the persistence of the tower as the kind of anchor to all the postcards. Um, so there's a certain statement about the durability of the urban form, and then there's another reading of um, all of, in each postcard, the square is named something else. And the more modern the postcard, the farther back in history the name refers to the, you know, the person in history. Um, and it coincides in its time and person when it's Hitler plots, when they're occupied and it's called, you know, so it's the, it's the malleability of, um, the identity that's constructed that way and then the, the construction of the actual city. Um, in the work that's in the gallery, um, I'm using layers and mapping to reveal processes that are acting on this place in St. Louis. And 
I guess I just want to um, pause for a minute and, and try to articulate something that I was thinking of, again, in relation to using the computer as a tool. Because um, I think the way I try, these are all computer drawings, and I use Illustrator mostly. Um, and uh, I guess there's elements of collage in this drawing. But I'm always, um, I'm trying to, uh, I guess, uncover what is acting on a site and shaping a site. And I'll explain that in a minute. And I think there's a difference in drawing on the tools that the computer gives you to do that that's different from teaching the computer to do something. So I'm not trying to, I don't want the computer to think for me. I wanna, I wanna just have the computer as a new kind of pencil, maybe, right? That will um, enable me to just do more things and use translucency and kind of, it's a new kind of, um, set of tools maybe rather than something I'm going to um, give it input and have it give me something back. So this project is about um, Kinlock which is right next to Ferguson, Missouri if you heard about what we have going on uh, lately in the news in um, St. Louis. It's the events in Ferguson were a way of um, it, sort of brought to light many underlying issues that had been going on in these communities for a long time. Kinlock was the first community to be incorporated as its own city in 1948, all African American. Um, it has a long and complicated history that I can't get into, but starting in the um, early 2000s, it's been systematically erased. So it's right by the airport, and when you fly in, it's just uh, a, a kind of a ghost town. And it's ironic because St. Louis is a lot like Detroit. So we have large areas of vacancy in the downtown. So it's not like we're busting at the seams and we need to take this out and um, put other projects in. Um, but the story of the erasure of this place is, is uh, common. It's, it's happening all over St. Louis and uh, it's highly political. And it's very, uh, there are a lot of um, forces that act on the site before it's actually erased. So these are, are drawings that I have done to try to tell these stories of how this place has been sort of systematically destabilized and eventually erased. Um, so to me, the drawings are a way of, um, I guess, advocating and I use them as a way to make visible these processes that are making this place invisible. So the making of invisibility, um, I want to highlight. And so through, it's a timeline, and you can see the change in the urban fabric, the effect of the airport. Um, there are many other political territories that, um, meaning, I think I have a better map here. Um, there are a lot of overlays to the place. So it's a place with a topography and stream system. It's been broken up into all of these governmental entities. And this is Kinlock here, and that's the airport. And um, it gets, these places get overlaid with these territories that are economic and political. They are the free trade zones. They're the tax incentive zones, special districts, all of that, which you cannot see. You can read about them, but what I do is I take them and I draw them and superimpose them so that then you can see the intersections and the intensities of where those things hit the ground that are actually staging the erasure that, that then follows. Um, so these are some other versions of that. And um, I see these computer drawings as sharing some of those traits of the hand drawing in this way um, because of that ability to understand the different spaces of any one place through any one drawing you can kind of understand that they're part of different ways you make the site you make or remake the site um, and the other point about um, the drawings that i like to make is that the mainstream media depicts a dominant narrative, and this is common in any story of 
cities and sites. And so these drawings, uh, their agency lies in their ability, again, through selective layering and extracting and plotting, you can create totally different pictures of the same place. So there are alternate narratives to this place. And this is, say, the more political, economic one. And this is the localized one, where you could look at the core institutions and the churches and the life on the ground and the topography and all of the kind of ecosystems that were there as well. So there's ambiguity and um, there's also intersection and overlap. And um, I do want to, oh, and these are, these are some other working drawings, if you will, maybe they're sketches. Um, just other versions of putting the time notation and the events together with the, um, the kind of uh, spatial depiction of the place. Um, and this drawing is showing all of the Missouri Senate House bills and legislate, legislation that was really destabilizing the place where all of these um, vectors shaping the space are really embedded. Um, and then all the different public actors, public and private sector actors and the other groups and trying to convey um, in some way the, the range of competing interests that uh, work are at play on this site. And this is the reference to McCarg, Ian McCarg, which you all probably know. He's a um, landscape architect who in the 60s, I think, um, was concerned with uh, ecological systems and landscapes that were getting um, compromised by patterns of urbanization that were paying no attention to the um, kind of core systems. This is probably a better image. And he sort of came up with a methodology of slicing out the layers as a way to analyze the site on terms of um, all of the features that are the best, um, that would preserve the health of the landscape the most in order to locate within that where best to put urbanization. And this went on, this is considered the underpinning of what is now GIS, which is, which is Geographic Information Systems which is a, a mapping database, map vector lines you can get of cities that are tagged with information. And that's what we use as a base. Um, and my students, so just my students um, use both. My students are, um, they produce a drawing and they print it and then they draw on top of it. And I wanted to make that point that in all of the drawings that I do, there's still a back and forth process of generating it um, by hand and then printing it and then drawing on top of it and sketching that and sketching back in. So I'm segueing a little bit to um, just step back and look at uh, the role of the computer. I think this has been mentioned, you know, the um, modeling that's available is very valuable. Um, if you can then bring that back out and treat it as another site on which to draw on. and. Um, CAD is problematic in some ways because it's so blank and sites are so not blank, right? They're loaded. Um, and uh, especially the 3D software, which presents the, the form um, with very little context. So sometimes I will have my students, they'll work on trace, as you can see, and then they literally bring it into the CAD and their CAD is tracing the trace. And I think that's maybe the best way to bridge we have to bring it into CAD to produce the drawings that um, clients expect and that we can get generate views from, and I think that is very valuable. Um, so this is part of a process that maybe is bridging between those of us that value the hand-drawn sketching and the computer. And it can lead to, to new things, too. This is a student project on that site I was just describing where he was coming up with an idea of a gradient sort of zoning. And it was very interesting, and it was a way to not have this either or where you had the development agenda versus the, the public life there. Um, so these are some of those drawings. And then I just 
have these here at the end to um, communicate. What's, these are just from classes that I've taught and how I use drawing in classes constantly to diagram key relationships. But I have and to kind of spatialize things that we talk about. So this is what we've talked about a lot, right? How you communicate and um, project and understand through drawing. But I have my students draw a lot and they read um, all kind of different texts in the seminar and they have to try to articulate through drawing what those um, main ideas are. <coughs> So it's a, if, the, if the text they're reading is a site, then they are needing to understand that site, right? And pull out what's important about it and try to, try to make sense of that and how all these pieces go together. So I have my students drawing this last week in class. And then their research projects, they will research a site um, and the processes that act on a site, and I don't have them write research papers, but they draw their research papers. So this is one of one student's project. Um, this is just in here uh, to, sh to illustrate the other applications that I use drawing. I, in my recent book, which is on redevelopment in cities broadly, American cities, um, it's a book that's trying to get in, into the behind the scenes of any of these projects. So in Portland, there's a new district coming up and we're trying to highlight the main design features and organization, but we're trying to overlay it with the processes and the relationships that made it um, happen. So these are just some other drawings and they're all in Illustrator and they're always trying to show all of these very loaded conditions of a site. And I think that's the last one. I'm ending it with my daughter's <laughs> sketch because we've had a lot of um, children's drawings and she made this recently. I have a lot of trips. This is the fourth trip and in, a, in a short amount of time. Columbus is would be here, <clears throat> right here. But um, it's a game, which I think is fantastic. And it's, um, it's a map. So that's, that's where I'll end it. Thank <laughs> you.